Hello and welcome to Top Linux Tech. Today we will be discussing about installing software on Arch Linux that is not found in the repositories or the AUR, meaning that you will have to download the source code from somewhere else and compile it yourself into a working binary. And besides, this process is not only for Arch Linux, but it is also valid for any other Linux distribution. So what happens when you can't find a specific software in your distribution repository or maybe the AUR? Well, chances are that it will be available as a source code or as a standalone installer package provided by the developer. And we'll cover both methods in this example. For this demonstration, I'll be explaining on how to build a program directly from source by using the GNU Auto Tools which is a popular choice in the free software ecosystem, which contains the GCC compiler and other binaries required for building an application directly from source code. For this, you will need to have the GCC compiler, build utilities and libraries installed on your system. For example, in Arch Linux, you'll need the base-devel meta package and on Debian or Ubuntu systems, for example, you would need to have the build-essential package installed, otherwise the building process will fail. Now, when building an application directly from source, there always will be a manual on how to build the package. Usually, you'll download the package and the instructions either from GitHub or the developer's website in most cases. So let's jump right now to one of my test machines and see how we can build a software from source. For this demonstration, I have chosen the DWM window manager and the simple terminal because they are very light, minimal and very practical for this demo. For the second installation demo, I have chosen the Foxit PDF reader to be installed directly from the developer's website. Okay, so I'll just start one of my test machines right here. I'm going to login. And currently I do not have any desktop environment or window manager installed. So this will be a perfect example of how you can install the DWM window manager, for example. So now I'll have to download the corresponding software from the developer's website. And because I have no graphical desktop environment, I'm simply going to use a text-based web browser in this case. So I'll simply run eLinks, which is a text-based web browser, and navigate to suckless.org. Now, Suckless is a combination of software projects that are usually very minimalistic in nature. They contain the least amount of code, which makes them fast, stable, and extremely lightweight. So here I'm interested in the DWM window manager and the simple terminal. So I'm going to navigate to the download section right now and simply download both applications. So I'll choose to save this one in my downloads folder. And I'll do the same for the simple terminal. Now these are extremely tiny, so the downloads should have finished by now. Okay. So I'll simply navigate into my downloads folder right now. And let's list the directory contents. And yeah, there they are. Let's first extract the contents of both packages and then see how we can compile them from source. Oh, 
OK. I'll simply switch into the DWM folder and see the directory contents inside. I'll just run my midnight commander here. And the thing that you should check out first is the readme file, which will obviously contain the instructions on how to build a package. And here, under the installation, it clearly says that to build the package, all you have to do is simply run the make clean install command. Now also the requirements will be listed. And in this case, we need the xlib header files, but we already have that installed. So, so far so good. I'm going to exit out of here. And let's start the building process. Now, in many cases, within the build directory, you will notice that there is a configure script. This script checks for all of the available configuration in order to make sure that the project can be built. Otherwise, when you run the script, you'll get errors in form of missing dependencies, which means that there are other dependencies that are not satisfied, which you need to install first in order to proceed with the configure and the make program. So you will usually have to run the script by typing in dot forward slash configure and then press enter. But in this case, we have no such script because there's nothing really to configure here. This is a very lightweight program. So the next logical step is simply to run make, then make install and finally make clean. So here I will simply run the make command and press enter. And this will actually grab the source code and compile it into a working binary. Now, to be able to install this binary, you need to execute the command make install. And that's it. It's just simple as that. Now, of course, this will have to be executed with super user privileges because this binary will be installed into the system's binary folder for which we do not have access as an ordinary user. So I'll run sudo make install. And I will also include the clean command. Now you can run them separately, just make install and then make clean. And what clean does is actually cleaning the system from all of the built package cache that has been produced during compilation time and it is no longer necessary. So I'll run all of this together. So sudo make install clean. Provide my super user password, press enter, and that's it. Let's switch back to my downloads directory and also install the simple terminal. So let's see what we have here. The make file is there and there is no configure script. So make, and finally sudo make install clean. And there we go. Now both the terminal and the window manager are installed within the system binary folders, which means that we can execute the applications by simply typing in the command. Now here I'll simply run startx to initialize my XORG session and run the DWM window manager. And there we go. The software has been installed correctly. And as you can see, it's quite operational. Now, as with any window manager, you'll have to configure your XINIT RC file, which I have done previously because I do a lot of experimenting with different window managers on this virtual machine. This is not a DWM tutorial. So I'm not going to cover the configuration of the DWM this time. However, I'm going to pause the video here and simply import my config files. And then we can proceed towards installing another application. And this time we'll download the installer directly from the developer. There it is. I have just customized it a little bit. So I'll start Firefox right now. and navigate to Foxit software. It 
this is a nice PDF reader. So it will serve as a perfect example on how to install program from an installer provided by a developer. So let's choose Faxit Reader. The software is proprietary, but it, it is free. And we need the Linux 64-bit binary, so I'll choose that. Save the file. Okay. Let's now navigate to my downloads folder. And there it is, Faxit Reader. It's also in a tar archive, so we'll have to extract it. And now we have a run script that we can run to simply install this program. So I'll run sudo dot forward slash faxit reader. It ends on dot run and press enter. Provide my super user password. And I'll simply choose the destination folder for the installation. Now the slash opt is perfect for any optional software. So I'll simply go with that. Click on next. Yes, I accept the license. And there we go. The software is now installed and it can be simply called from the applications menu or from the terminal. So let's try and run it right now. Faxit reader. And there we go. We can also do the same from the terminal. And that's it. This should be the usual case scenario of how you would install a program and compile it directly from source or use an installer provided by the developer. Now, to uninstall these applications, Usually, there will be an uninstallation script or something similar. So let's check inside the installation folder. And there's already an uninstall to that desktop script that you can run to uninstall this software. And let's actually uninstall the DWM and the simple terminal right now. So I'll simply navigate to my downloads folder and switch inside the ST terminal and run sudo make uninstall clean. And as you can see, the binary has been removed from the system. And let's also do the same for the DWM. And there we go. Right now the programs are operating in memory, but once I terminate the session, they will no longer be available, which means that we have properly uninstalled a program that we have previously built from source. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, share, or subscribe. And also feel free to ask me any questions that you might have. This is Top Linux Tech, and I'll see you next time.